You simply cannot understand what is happening in five sense reality without understanding what five sense reality is. Um, and so what I do now is I explain the illusion, explain how reality works. And, 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 and then you can explain people's daily experience and what's happening in the world of the scene in a much deeper way than you could if you didn't do that. Because if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're dealing with a network of people who have in the shadows an understanding of how reality works and they are keeping that awareness from the people, then you, they put themselves in a fantastic position of power for a number of reasons. One is they know how reality works. They know it's illusory. They know this world of the so-called physical is holographic. They know that it's just a projection of something else and it's the something else where you make the change in this world, not the world of the scene. I mean, you don't change a movie by changing what's hitting the screen. You change where the, what's hitting the screen is coming from. Um, and so um, as long as they can hold us in, 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 a, in a five sense awareness, in a belief and experience of what we perceive as the physical solid world, and we are looking for answers to things we don't like out there in the so-called solid world. When there is no out there and there is no solid world, we are never, ever, ever going to change anything. Because we're, we're standing symbolically, virtually literally, on, on, the, on, the, on the stage of the theater and we're screaming at the screen and telling the movie to change. Ain't going to change. Um, and so to explain the world and to explain how a few can control the many you have to explain this uh, nature of reality as opposed to the reality we think and are told from cradle to grave that we are um, experiencing and also um, if you don't we don't get into those levels of reality and where this is coming from like I just said you're never going to change it so many things would would come into um, into into clarity and that is the fact that this world is not solid, and quantum physics has well confirmed that anyway. Um, it's it's holographic. It is a projection of it's an uh, a projection of an information field, and one level of the personal information field uh, we call the auric field, and. Um, at one level, it's an electromagnetic field. I mean, you know, technology can now, you know, photograph it and stuff like that. And um, that field is the information field from which the body is uh, projected. And if you look at alternative complementary medicine, they say, quite rightly, that mainstream medicine only treats the symptom, never the cause. And there's a reason for that, because they, uh, mainstream science and mainstream medicine, which is an extension of that, they refuse to accept the, the existence of the field, even though you can photograph it. They see only the body, what I call the hologram. Now, because the hologram, the body, is, is, an, uh, is, is a, a projection from the, this information field, they're only going to treat the symptom which is the body because when you when you have a hologram uh, the ones you buy in the shops um, the laser reads the information in the in the uh, waveform uh, field on the print and that projects that information in the form of whatever's been photographed so this is just a reflection of that take that away there's nothing this is gone change that that changes so um, they're going to the body to try to treat it with the scalpel and the drug and they're treating a projection and once again they're, they're trying to change the movie on the screen what the best complementary and alternative healers do what the great shaman have done throughout history is they go directly to the field and they heal that mm -hmm. and if that information field is healed its projection the hologram we call the body must be healed and that's what they all do then you um, you look at um, 
thing. We're all healers, aren't we? Yeah, but you, th th then, then you look, somebody said, said, said today, how can, how can a psychic tell you what, uh, something about yourself that only you know? Because you've got the field, and that's, that's, that's your um, energetic self. It's your energetic self beyond the body that we see. It, that, that, that's the field that holds your memory. It holds your experience, and it holds projections of, 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 of where you could go from here, uh, the possibilities of where you could go. And if someone can tune into that field, tune into that frequency, they can access the information in that field. So when, 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 when someone says, well, this psychic told me this, and I, only I know that, how do they do it? The answer, they accessed your field, you know it, and so they got it from you, but a level of you that you're not aware of. <laughs> where, where, um, a wonderful example of what I've been talking about in the sense of you control perception, you control um, uh, th people's sense of reality. Because most people have bought the lie that this is solid and this is solid, as opposed to, uh, um, you know, uh, I mean, you um, put a, a disk in a computer tower. It's information. But the computer reads it, and on the screen comes things that seem to have uh, time, space, and solidity, right? When you're playing the games, well, I don't know, but, but people do. Um, well, we are reading information fields, and we are decoding them into holographic reality in the same way that a computer is decoding information on a disk to create people, text, colors, images, moving pictures on a screen. Um, and, but if you buy the idea that world is solid, shape-shifting is impossible. How can, how can something shift from a solid form to another solid form? It's absolutely impossible. And so people hear me talk about it and they go, it's impossible. No, no, your perception of it thinks it's impossible. If your perception was wider of the nature of reality that we're experiencing, it would be perfectly um, logical. And I, I'll, gi I'll give you an example of um, this decoding illusion. There was a wonderful book written in the early 1990s by a man called Michael Tolbert. And it was called The Holographic Universe. And all, basically what he did, he went round those cutting-edge scientific thinkers who were had come to the conclusion that the, the universe, the reality, was, um, was holographic, which it is, illusorily physical. And he told the story there of um, one night his father had a party for some friends and got a stage hypnotist along. And uh, he was doing the usual party tricks. And he had this one fella, I think his name was Tom, and he was sat in a chair. And he was, he was making him see things in the room that weren't there. And then... Um, He's, this hypnotist said to Tom, um, when I bring you back to a waking state, you're not going to be able to see your daughter in the room. Um, and so at that point, the hypnotist leads the daughter to stand right in front of Tom. So he's looking into her belly. He brings him back from a waking state. And the hypnotist said, uh, can you see your daughter, Tom? Tom's going, no, she's not here. She's giggling. He can't hear her. So the hypnotist then went behind the back of the daughter and he put his hand in the small of her back and he said, I'm holding something, Tom. What am I holding? And Tom went, what are you holding? Watch. She was. He said, is an inscription on it, Tom? Can you read it? And he peered forward. He read the inscription. His daughter's between him and the watch. Now, if you talk to a mainstream scientist, uh, or most people, they'd say that's ridiculous, that's impossible. No, it's not. It's perfectly, perfectly easy to explain. Our basic state, our basic state of awareness, our basic state of being, uh, at this level anyway, is energetic awareness. It's an energetic field. It's just awareness. An energetic field. The more we raise our vibration, the more we will perceive. Yeah. You, exactly. You, you, you perceive your, 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 your perception span gets greater the more you raise your vibration. But how do you explain that people like you all of a sudden your vibration went to? I know. But what, what I was just going to uh, what, what I was just going to say was therefore what the what 
the father Tom and all of us have to do to bring into apparent reality what we're experiencing is we have to decode that natural state of, of, of energetic information and we have to decode it like a computer into holographic reality. Only when we do that does that energetic field manifest holographically as a body as in, our, in our world within the range of the conscious mind. If we do not do that, then it stays as an energetic field that we can't see. So, when the hypnotist was saying to Tom, when I bring you back to a waking state, you're not going to be able to see your daughter in the room, what he was doing was, in effect, in computer terms, putting a firewall in Tom's decoding system. Thus, he decoded everything else in the room and all the other people in the room, but he did not decode that field, his daughter, because it was firewalled by the hypnotic implant. And um, because she holographically was not in his um, range of perception, she was not in the way of what was in the holographic uh, realm, which had not been firewalled off from being uh, decoded. And that was the watch that was behind her. Um, and so when, you, when you, um, you look at that and how easy it is to um, manipulate the, what we decode and what we don't, um, if you know it works, then the potential through owning the mainstream media and the mainstream education system and all the sources of information, programming and hypnotic implants, uh, the potential for dictating what a whole populations perceive and don't perceive is absolutely fantastic. Here's, here's a statistic. This is mainstream science. Um, every second we are taking um, a snapshot of reality um, which um, scientists call impressions. We're taking an impression of reality. Um, and every second, we are taking 10,000 impressions of reality. But the brain takes 40 of those impressions mm -hmm. to construct the reality we think we are now experiencing. That, that, that is the just a just a a taste of the staggering level of illusion that we are actually experiencing you say to most people not in this room because they're aware people but in mo most most places you say to them if they were sitting here um can you see everything there is to see in the space you're looking at and they say well yeah of course you're seeing a tiny fraction this um uh this room that we're seeing, this world that we're seeing, is actually a tiny, tiny frequency range called visible light. And it's so small that, um, depending on the scientists you talk to, they, took, they say that um, of the mass matter that exists in the reality, the universe as they call it, um, the electromagnetic spectrum is about 0.005% of what exists in the space we're looking at. And visible light, which is the only frequency range that we can bring into vi a, visible, a visible reality, is a fraction of the 0.005%. And, and, and someone rightly said, you know, in terms of what there is to see and what there is to perceive in the reality that we uh, are, li are in, humans are basically blind. We can see virtually nothing. Now, when you put all this together, um, then, and, and, and people see it, and they see how you connect the dots, one of the great impressions upon them is, well, I'm now open to anything in terms of possibility, because if I've been living this life, taking all these things for granted, the, uh, about the reality I'm living in and none of it's true then what the heck else isn't true and the mind opens to uh, other possibilities and and what you're doing is you're freeing the mind to allow your awareness and your sense of the possible to expand 
And as you, as you free your mind and you, you, you let it free of the, the box, and what is the box? It's perception. A sense of limitation equals um, a limited life on the basis of that's all you think is possible. Once the, 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 the box breaks, the bubble bursts, and you allow your, your, your perception to expand, now it's like, you know, um, getting your perceptions from here, and that's all, it's the same with the media I spoke about earlier, um, and, and trying to work out who you are, where you are, and what the nature of everything is in there, and then suddenly, shoo, Infinite possibilities. Yes, and, and what are you accessing when you go like that? You're accessing all this awareness, all this perception, all this knowledge, all these insights that you weren't before. So when, when, when that perception views someone in that perception, they go, you're mad, you're crazy, you're, you're insane, because they cannot perceive what you're perceiving. Um, and it's not that they're worse than you or not as good as you or any of it. It's just that they're not perceiving what you can, what you can. but they could if they just opened the box. And so... Yeah, but you went full on. I mean, when this happened and you start talking at the conference, from my understanding, all of a sudden there was words that were even beyond what you would comprehend that was coming out. So, I mean, you didn't hold it back at all. So obviously for some people, there's the gap and there is most of us are learning to just adapt and slowly, uh, depending on our environment, opening up some doors. But you went full on. I mean, you opened the whole... <laughs>